What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Miss Jenny B, and we are back with another Ball Alert review. Today, we are reviewing Snowfall Season 3, Episode 9, Blackout. So let's get into it. As always, Snowfall starts off with a preview of everything we need to know for the new episode. And this week, it showed us Andre finding out about um, Franklin's mission with the CIA. We'll deal with the CIA. Rigo confronts Reed about being compromised. Avi uh, loses a guy, his right-hand man, in a shootout. Teddy confronts Julia about blowing up the whole mission. Franklin talks to Louis about Andre having the file. And finally, Franklin confronts Andre about the file and tells him to get out of town. Andre says he will, but he will come back and haunt him and hunt him down or whatever he said. And then Franklin killed him. And now I think this is the last episode before the season's finale. And I don't think I can handle it. So the episode started off with Franklin just sitting, um, looking over the valley view. Well, the view from the valley in um, LA clips back and forth between Franklin just sitting there sweating and Melody finding her dad and she's crying, obviously coked out still because remember last episode, she was on her way home after she met up with, well, after Wanda met up with her. So she was like, F this, I'm leaving. So she was on her way home when Franklin was in the house. So she finally gets home and finds her dad. The police are there. Obviously, Andre's racist, well, I don't know if he's racist, but I'm pretty sure he's racist. His racist partner, um, Herb Nixon, he's there to um, console Melody and things of that nature. As she's getting taken out of the house, her best friend comes and consoles her and then she brings her to her house. So then Franklin is talking to Rob, who is his friend from um, his prep school that he went to in the first season, the one who introduced him to Avi and all this other crap. So he's there now and he's trying to get an al alibi because he's saying that he was there. He's making Rob go through everything that Franklin said that he did that night. Franklin leaves there after Rob gets it under control and he goes to see Jerome, Leon and Louie and he tells them that Andre killed himself. And they're like, how do you know that? And he's like, um, my mom told me basically. But everybody is literally like, mad confused because Andre was so proud, so stubborn, and he would never, somebody like that would never kill themselves. But like I said in the last review, it's easy to think that he would kill himself because his pride and joy, his daughter is on coke, she don't wanna go to college, and everything is like freaking, how do you say, like crashing down on him at this time. So some people have those days and maybe he wanted to kill himself, but most people know, like people who grew up with him know that he would never do that. So. Franklin, in order to like just keep the heat down off of them, he tells the crew to lay low at Rob's house. So then he goes to Sissy's. The crime scene, remember Sissy is Andre's next door neighbor. So the crime scene is still active. And as he's trying to walk into his mom's house, Officer Nixon, who's the white cop, he walks up to Franklin and he's mad suspicious. He throws his cigarette butt at him. And Franklin's like, what happened officer? And um, Sissy comes outside, she's like calling Franklin inside and uh, the officer is like, your mom's calling you or whatever. So Franklin goes inside the house. But you can tell that obviously Nixon is suspicious about something because all Andre talked about was Franklin's saying. So now Reed goes to um, meet with Avi. Avi got like the freaking hotel chairs against the windows and stuff after he just got attacked. So now he's on edge and he's like to um, read, like, how could you give me information to get out of town, but you can't give me information about why or when or or like what the heck happened. Basically, Avi is pissed because his right hand man is dead and Reed is not giving him any, any information. But he's just like, I will handle it. The person who ratted you out is getting taken care of. but. What we do know is that we didn't pull the trigger to kill your right hand man. And so Avi has to explain to him that basically he's in trouble with his own country. He's Israeli. And um, Reed is like, how could that even happen? And this like connects back to when he tried to steal from Franklin. So all of this money was to settle a debt with his own country because he used to work for the black market and he sold some product or he sold something and basically they came back and used it against um, Israel. So Israel had beef with Avi and in order to settle it, he tried to pay them off. And after he paid them off, it was okay. But then when Julia went and told, blow up everything, the country was after him again. So that's why homie ended up dead. But then Reed is just like, 
we've got it handled. The person who did this is under control, which is Julia. So then now it goes back to Franklin. He's at his mom's house with Alton and he basically is freaking on edge. He takes a freaking bottle of Coke out the fridge. And you know, back then it had the, the one you need a freaking bottle cap opener to open. So he takes it out the, the fridge. He's talking to his parents, telling them to uh, lay low for a while because the heat is on us because Andre is dead and obviously his number one target was Franklin. So Sissy's like, why would we leave? Like, why would I do that? That doesn't make any sense. And Alton is just looking at his mannerisms, seeing that he's all hesitant and, and jumpy and stuff like that. So he opens the can, tells them to leave. I mean, opens the bottle, tells them to leave and puts it on the table and leaves the room, like leaves the house. Alton is looking down at the freaking bottle. He didn't even drink it. So now he knows something is up. So then it goes to the bar with Nixon and all the rest of the police department. They're talking about Andre's case. Nobody's understanding why he would kill themselves because kill himself because he's just not that type. So they're like, if anything comes up suspicious, we're gonna take everything from Franklin Saint because that's all he talked about. And that kid is bringing in a million dollars a week. So it's just like zooming into Nixon's face. And he's just sitting there like listening to the conversation and then it's a blackout. So then Teddy um, meets up with Rigo. And remember Rigo was about to chop him up into little pieces after he found out that he'd been compromised. But um, well, Reed told him that he was Teddy and convinced him to work with the CIA. So now he's um, meeting up with Rigo and like linking him with another CIA operative who was working with Julia, Stephen Havelmeyer. And um, he was the one that Julia told that everybody was disposable. And then at that moment, she was like, I guess even Teddy's disposable. So I guess that's when it clicked. I think in the review, I said that um, she's probably gonna sell Teddy out, which she did, but it turns out she was just trying to save him from the government. Like once this all is over, that means that the government would off him too if he was disposable as well. So she was trying to save him. That's why she blew up the whole operation. But anyway, so Teddy links Rigo with Steven and basically make Steven do whatever Rigo wants, like give him an international passport or what is it called? A diplomatic passport so that he can travel and all these other things um, so that he could work and continue working for the mission. So Steve, once um, Rigo agrees to the new terms and leaves, Steven is like, what the heck is going on? Hetty is like, look, Julia, I know y'all sent Julia here to take the operation away from me, but she came to blow it up. You're gonna do everything this dude says and everything I say, and you're gonna talk to the boss or else you're gonna tell them that your own agent came and blew up the operation that is funneling millions and millions of dollars into the war fund. So now we finally, well now I finally know what the heck Teddy is doing all of this for, and it's to pay for the country to go to war. Duh, they love war, why not? So he's like, you need to handle all of this because people are dying. They leave that meeting and Teddy is in the car and he's listening to the radio and he, he learns about Andre's death. So he's like, what the F? Cause he knows it's Franklin, like obviously. It goes back to Melody, she's at her homegirl's house. The mom is talking to the girl. She's like asking where Melody's at. Melody is at, she's cooking breakfast. And the girl's trying to deflect, I forgot what her name is, but she's the one that was messing with Leon at one time. So she's trying to deflect because Melody's in the room doing co uh, crack. The mom busts in the room and she's like, oh, Melody, she's trying to get her to come get breakfast, but she sees her doing crack. And she's like, no, like, you gotta get out of here. That's the devil stuff. Like, I can't have that poison in my house. And the girl's just like, I just wanted her to, like, I wanted her to be here. I didn't want her to leave again or, or that's why I let her smoke in the house because I didn't want her to keep running away. But the mom is like, nah, you gotta go. You gotta, I don't know where you gonna go, but you gotta get the F out of here. So she leaves. Now she's walking home again through the projects, uh, but she's high, so she doesn't really care. So then Franklin and Leon goes to meet up with Man Boy, and they're there to address Leon's little run-in with Man Boy's dealer, because they were arguing over territory and stuff like that. And then uh, he got beat up and man boy basically said he wasn't gonna retaliate until he talked to Franklin because that's not how you do stuff around here because Franklin's the plug. They meet up and man boy's like, look, I need new terms because Leon is out here trying to start problems. He's taking over my territory or trying to take over my territory and he's messing with my people. He's like, now I want my drops to be 10 a key. If not, then I'm gonna use Leon's head from a little football or whatever. Franklin is like, well, prices stay the same or you can get yourself a new dealer 
and Leon is family, so if you mess with him, you mess with me. And Man Boy is like, that's messed up. And Franklin's like, I know, but that's just how it is. They leave the meeting and they're driving. Leon's driving as always. And so he tries to spark a conversation with Franklin. He's like, thank you for having my backpack there. And Franklin's like, park the car. You know, Franklin's on edge because he didn't kill the cop and he feels like everybody's on to him. So Franklin's like, pull over. He's like, you're telling me that you're sitting here trying to go to war with our partners. And Leon is like, every time I see him, he's trying to diss me and all this other crap, right? So then, first of all, this is like Emmy Award winning acting right here. Franklin, Damson Idris, right? He looks to Leon, he's like, he starts screaming. He's like, um, I built this organization from the ground up and I'll be damned if you try to tear it down just because you don't like the way another nigga talk. Like, he was screaming at him though. If you keep this up, then you're just gonna have to find your own new dealer. And then Leon was like, um, you don't even mean that. He was like, try me. Like, obviously I do mean that. The argument is done. They're just sitting there in, in silence. And, Le and Franklin is like, drive the freaking car. He said some like F-bombs in there, but it was very, very, very intense. Finally, Melody gets home just before she sits down. She's crying like she's remembering her dad. It's all taped up with crime scene tape. So she sits down because she got to get the edge off. So she tries to light her crack pipe, but then she sees the window and she notices that it's freaking unlocked. And you know, the only person that's coming through her window is Franklin. And the only way that it could be unlocked is if he went out because she hasn't been there. So um, then she has flashbacks of Franklin coming in and out her window and then it goes to the next scene. And the next scene is Franklin in the car. He hears all of these noises, like it's kids, lawnmower, people sawing and things like that. And he's sitting in the car. He literally has a panic attack. I think it's a panic attack because he didn't go to hospital. So it couldn't have been a heart attack, but he's tripping. Sissy goes to Melody's, well, he goes to Andre's sister's house is that Andre's sister? I thought she lived in Texas. So maybe I guess Andre's sister was at Andre's house. That's the only thing that makes sense. Sissy offers to host the repast for Andre because you know that they, they've grown up with, the, well, the kids grow up with each other because they were next door neighbors. So Sissy offers to host the repast. She offers the money as well, but um, she's like, Andre told me everything and that's the devil's money. So I don't want anything to do with that, but she accepts the offer for the repast. So then Reed, calls a meeting with Franklin after he hears about Andre. And so they're back in the diner and Franklin's like, what's this? Like every time uh, you hear about something, you call a meeting so you make sure that my mess doesn't end up in your lap. Rita was like, well, so what's going on? He was like, I have everything under control. He's like, I handled it just like I've been handling everything since I started this. He was like, I did what had to be done to protect me, protect you, to protect uh, the, the business. And um, Reed is like, I understand exactly what you're going through. And Franklin's like, there's no way that you could possibly understand anything that I am going through. And Reed like connects with him on their similarities because he has this whole operation that's just been blown up. Everybody's closing in on him or trying to kill him because they've been made and he's trying to fix it. And basically he explains this to Franklin without saying all of those extra words. So Franklin is like, Reed, when is it gonna end? And Reed is like, I don't know, but until then, like I'm here with you. Like we, we in this together, 10 toes down. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna like trust him but i feel like i do like i feel like he is dedicated to his mission and if he goes down everybody goes down i mean i guess that's good for franklin's case so then in the next scene teddy goes and finally confronts julia before she gets out of town for being a traitor and basically he tell she tells him that she was just trying to protect him and she felt that she was she felt better with herself to blow up the operation and save teddy than to take it away from him and let all of this, like let him be disposable by the government. You know what I'm saying? So she thought that she was protecting him, but he's not trying to hear it. He says his goodbyes and then that's that. So then he goes back to his office and we find out he's on coke. So then next, Franklin gets pulled over by Nixon. And now he's like, like he just knows that this is, end game so as soon as he sees the cop behind him he pulls out his gun but he's like what the heck am i doing so he puts it on the he puts it on the floor in front of him and nixon comes to his window tells him to keep his keep his hands on the wheel or visible and get to the back seat he pulls the gun on him franklin starts crying franklin's like look if you're gonna shoot me 
shoot me, like do it. And um, Nixon is like, look, I'm happy to put a, if you want a bullet, like I will be happy to give it to you. But if you want to live, I have some other ideas. And Franklin wipes his tears, starts smiling. He's like the almighty dollar. And he's like, yeah, like that's from when he found out that the dude was making a million dollars a week. So now he wants in on the money. And in exchange, Franklin is not going to jail for killing the cop. So now, Sissy is all uneasy. She's like doing dishes with Alton. And she's like, I cannot believe Al um, Andre would do such a thing. Like he doesn't even seem the type. And <laughs> it's not even funny, I'm sorry, but like bless her soul. Alton looks at her and he's like, you know he did it, right? Talking about Franklin because everybody in the freaking city knows that Franklin killed him. So he's like, you know he did it, right? And Sissy is like, what you mean? He's like, Franklin hasn't been to Rob's in a valley in a long time. And like, this is just obvious. Like, and so she break, basically breaks down, come into terms with the fact that her son killed Andre and that they're about to host the repast for him after, but bless her soul. So then Nixon takes the news to Melody and um, basically he sits her down and he's like, the results came back, your, di your dad died of a suicide. And she's like, you know, that's BS. Like everybody knows that Franklin killed my daddy. Franklin killed my daddy. And so he like details the evidence, like the trajectory of the bullet, the foot, the fingerprints on the gun and what have you. And she starts screaming, having a, she starts going crazy. So Nixon leaves, Reed, he meets with Gustavo. So at this point, he's he's met up with everybody that Julia has um, compromised. And I'm pretty sure that he's got it under control now. So Gustavo's the final person. Gustavo didn't even care in the first place when Reed called. But so he meets up with Gustavo. Gustavo finally tells him what he bought that house by the border for. And basically he's digging a tunnel to the US, how everybody smuggles drugs these days, you know? Well, them days. And um, now at the end, well, in the last few scenes, it's the repast. And so Melody is just sitting there crying, coked out, I mean, cracked out. She's scoping the room. She sees Franklin. She's just staring at Franklin. And then it's another blackout. So she leaves during a blackout, but Franklin notices. And so he follows her. And so she's in her house, scrummaging through everything. And Franklin is right behind her. He's like, look, Mel, you don't need that. Like, he thinks that she's trying to look for coke. He's like, you don't need any of that stuff. So she's going through the drawers and everything. She goes in the closet and she comes back out with a gun. She points it at Franklin and shoots him in the shoulder. And so now he's like, Melody, Melody, what you doing? He's like trying to crawl away. At first she's like hesitant. And then she follows. And Franklin is literally on his stomach, crawling, trying to crawl out the door. She fires another shot in this man's back, right? He's still crawling. He's like, what the heck? She stands over him and shoots him again. And then um, now he's bleeding out and she walks out the door and drops the gun and it's another freaking blackout. And then the episode ends. Oh my God. And I think this is the last episode before the season finale. I saw somebody tweet like, oh my God, Franklin, um, I hope he doesn't die. But he's literally the main character like on every single billboard. There's no way in hell that he would die. But he's definitely gonna be in the hospital for a few episodes, hopefully just uh, next episode and not into the new season. But I am so excited for the season finale. Like, it's gonna be crazy. Let me know what y'all think is gonna happen next. And any predictions for the new season, drop them all down below. Any comments, questions, or concerns, drop them down below as well. Previous episodes will be in the description. Other than that, thank you for watching. See you next week. Peace.